For the first time in 2022, CBN Monetary Policy Committee is later to meet today, January 24th and Tuesday uh, 25th, respectively. At the last meeting in November 2021, the committee voted to retain the monetary policy rate which is the benchmark interest rate at 11.5% and other key uh, parameters uh, as well. So let's look at the impact this will have, this new or what is likely to shape the discussion or the conversation of the committee in the first meeting this year. So Dr. Moda Yusuf is CEO Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise. He joins us via the Zoom platform now. Thank you for joining us. Uh, doctor, we appreciate your time. Mm. All right. The, the CBA Monetary Policy uh, Committee meets today and, of course, tomorrow as well. And it's expected to last you tomorrow. And so some of the key issues uh, are something like uh, inflation and all of that. What are your expectations? Especially, this is the first time in the year that the uh, committee will be meeting. Well, uh, Happy New Year to you once again. Oh, Happy uh, New Year. Good, yes, to, have you. Good uh, to have you again. Yes. My, my expectation is that the rates will be retained. I say this because uh, the economy is still struggling. You know, for most part of last year, what we had was a retention of rates. Mm. And the CBN was retaining the rates on account of the fact that the economy is yet to fully recover from the shocks of uh, COVID-19. Even though uh, Q3 uh, last year, the GDP growth was 4.03%, uh, we haven't had the, way, the GDP growth for Q4. But uh, we know that even the 4.03% was also largely on account of uh, what we call the base effect. Uh, many sectors are still struggling to be back. Uh, globally, uh, we are still having feelers of some uh, challenges around the Omicron variant and so on and so forth. So to the extent that the economy is still struggling, uh, I, I think this may not be a good time uh, for the central bank to be tightening monetary policy. Uh, secondly, when we look at the challenges of inflation, uh, if you look critically at it, most the bigger component of the inflation uh, issues are, are not strictly uh, on account of uh, the monetary phenomenon, although partially there's a monetary component, but largely uh, the key drivers of inflation are supply-side issues. Uh, things like insecurity, which has been affecting their cultural output and therefore having a pass-through effect on food inflation. Things like uh, the energy costs, the cost of diesel, the cost of gas, uh, which has been affecting the cost of production. We have challenges of logistics, cost of transportation, and all of that. All of these things. Either the NPR or CRR or liquidity ratio can impact on this. And in any case, the monetary space is already very tight. Mm. Hello, Dr. Moda. Hello, Dr. Moda. Can, can you hear me? Dr. Moda, if you can, if you, if you can hear me, um, I was going to follow up with a question. You were talking about the base effect. Can, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. 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 Just before we go to the base effect you were talking about earlier uh, as regards the, uh, the performance of the GDP in, in the last quarter, uh, let's uh, look more. The, the NPC committee is expected to look closely at the inflation trend vis-a-vis -vis fears of capital reversal associated with the monetary policy normalization in the U.S. and other advanced economies. So for instance, U.S. December inflation uh, was up by 7%. Uh, why Nigeria's uh, December inflation reversed previous uh, downward trends to settle at 15.63? How is this likely to shape NPC's decisions? Hello, Frank. Yeah, yeah can you hear me? Yeah, that was, that was a, a, a little break. 
Yeah, you are talking about monetary policy normalization. Y yes, you know, because when you look at other economies, for instance, you have um, the, the U.S. inflation, December inflation was up by 7%. Nigeria's inflation reversed the downward trend we we're witnessing that was witnessed for its consecutive uh, period uh, didn't happen. It was reversed. And now we have inflation at 15.63%. So I was asking, how is this likely to impact or influence the NPC's decisions? Well, the, the increase uh, in inflation was just about 0.23%. I'm talking about when you compare the figure of uh, the last figure that you had, which was 15.63% to 15.4%. So it's, it's really a very marginal increase. And my guess is that we had that increase as a result of the uh, consumer demand during the festive periods in December. I think that is what actually made the difference. So uh, generally, uh, even at 15 point something, 15.63 percent, it is still quite high. You know, uh, of course, there may be need to you know be looking at interest rates. These are these capital flow reversers. These are these the normalization of interest rates uh, yeah. in other global and in other economies, particularly the U.S. So that may have implications. Uh, there may be a temptation to look at how we can you know, uh, push up interest rates in order to uh, stem or avoid capital flow reversals. But the reality is that because of the foreign exchange challenges that we have had, because of the liquidity problem that we have had, not much of inflows had come in over time. So there is actually nothing much to flow out. Because even as we speak, many of the foreign portfolio investors or foreign investors that wants to take their funds out are having difficulties taking them out. So the foreign exchange problem, you know, predates this normalization. So there may not be any significant change because that we have not witnessed any significant inflows because of the signaling effect that the liquidity crisis in the Forex market has created. So we don't even have so much funds that which that may want to flow out on account of the normalization of a uh, of, of monetary policy regime in the United States and other parts of the world. Mm. Well, it's still, let's dwell a bit on that. You know, the, the CBN, um, a lot of people are saying that the CBN perhaps will be looking closely at the European Union PMI data, talking about the, um, you know, the price managing index and the purchase, uh, the, the commodity price index, why the US GDP and the PCI figures will come out this week. So already the Federal Reserve is giving Nigeria conditions, uh, more stringent conditions to access loans. And that's why they, come up, they came up with the fact that Nigeria needs to devalue the Naira and raise interest rates. So you don't think this will make any difference at the, at the meeting? No, I think the major issue with the CBN has been the manner in which the CBN is managing the foreign exchange market. That has always been the issue with the IMF, with the World Bank, and even with some uh, domestic analysts as far as uh, the CBN is concerned. I think that is a major macroeconomic issue uh, that we are dealing with at the moment. So if there is any engagement around the CBN's role in the macroeconomic env environment, I think the bigger engagement will be around the foreign exchange management. In other words, there has been a clamor for a flexible exchange rate regime, uh, which the CBN, for some reasons, has been resisting over time. Uh, so if there is a shift in that direction, maybe that may meet some of the uh, requirements or address some of those uh, concerns uh, that, that are been and on, on, Of course, on interest rates, perhaps uh, something can happen, but generally, uh, the domestic issues, the domestic policy environment it's a much bigger issue as far as attracting capital uh, is concerned. Unless we address those domestic uh, policy environment, especially around the Forex, uh, we may not be able to make much progress as far as capital flows is concerned. 
Oh, okay, okay. So you don't think that the CBN is likely to heed the calls of World Bank that is asking Nigeria to devalue it, Naira, and of course to leave dollar to flow, as it were? No, it depends because the CBN has been a bit rigid as far as this is concerned. Mm. I mean, we have been on this conversation for over three years. And there has not been any significant movement. I mean, look at the premium between the official window and the and the parallel market window. It's well over 100. So well over 100 naira. You know, the best practice in management of this kind of situation is a premium of just about 5%. But here we are, we are dealing with a premium of uh, close to 50%. That is, that is very significant. And uh, we have seen that there is this rigidity uh, on the part of the monetary authorities as far as this aspect of monetary policy is concerned. So unless there's a shift, and I'm not seeing any serious indication that there will be a shift under the current uh, leadership of the CBN. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let, let's dwell on this now. Um, Let's look at some of the macroeconomic policies of the CBN. The APS Bank disclosed that uh, they were going to, you know, improve access to finance and credit for households, small and medium enterprises in the in the year, the, the new year rather. Uh, so, given these subsequent interventions in in manufacturing, you have CBN's intervention in agri uh, sector as well. Uh, for example, you have the Anchor Borrowers Program uh, out there. And so the, the question really is because some people are already saying, some experts are already saying, I mean, we do not really require CBN expert or C policies that will impact more on the Naira uh, than some of these uh, interventions we are seeing from the CBN. So what is likely to change uh, this time? Well, I'm not seeing anything uh, changing significantly. Uh, what I do know is that the CBN has been very bullish in terms of driving credit in the real sector. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the loan to deposit ratio at 65%, which has been putting a lot of pressure on the, on the financial, on the, on, the, on the banks. We have the differentiated CRR, which is also you know, to encourage the banks to lend to the real sector. Uh, we have the Anchor Borrowers Program, and we have various initiatives to the development uh, bank, uh, development banking institutions. And we also have quite a number of uh, interventions directly from the CBN through the uh, National Macrofinance Bank. Hello, Dr. Muda. Well, I think we just uh, while we wait to connect with uh, um, Dr. Moda Yusuf, who has been um, giving us insight into the NPC meeting, all eyes on that meeting. And so let, let's look at um, some of the information before we go to our discussion. If you look at the inflation figure for Nigeria, it's at currently 11.5%. The last meeting uh, that the CBN or uh, the committee met, they decided to leave the rate at 11.5%. But if you look at the trend uh, by the Central Bank of Nigeria and its Monetary Policy Committee, they've left the, this rate uh, for almost all through the year 2021. And so, uh, well, I think we we'll have to dwell more on that. Uh, Dr. I'm aware Dr. Moda Yusuf uh, is connected back to us. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I need you to land on your thought and so we can look at some other issues. You were talking about the fact that uh, the, CBN inter the CBN have been driving credit to the rail sector. Yeah, the CBN has been doing quite a lot in that space. Mm. Although there are concerns first about the quality of the intervention funds, uh, whether uh, the, the rate at which there is, there is default, default rate, with respect to some of the intervention funds are quite high, particularly the component of intervention funds that are being administered outside the deposit money banks. I mean, mm. for instance, the Anchor Brewers Program, All right. default rate, I think, is, is well over 50%, you know? And, uh, of course, there's also the issue of who bears the credit risk. 
the commercial banks are a bit reluctant because the risk of lending to the real sector is high. The risk of lending to SMEs is also high. So there's a need to put in place a de-risking framework to de-risk that space, the risk sector space and the SME space so that the commercial banks can do a lot more in terms of okay. advancing credit. Just, just before I let you go quickly, uh, Dr. Muda, just if you can do this in 30 seconds, that will be fine. Give us your outlook. You have said earlier that you do not see the, the Central Bank Monetary Policy Committee uh, reviewing the interest rate. What's your outlook for the economy in the year 2022? Well, the outlook is that, uh, you know, there's going to be in an election period. So there's a lot of spending, election, election spending will take place uh, from the politicians. Uh, the lending, I mean, the debt profile is likely to continue to increase on account of the fact that the revenue situation is still generally very weak. The inflation situation may not, may not, uh, may not change significantly. And of course, oil price, oil revenue is likely to do a lot better, given the scenarios that we are seeing with crude oil price and so on. 